Community Media got its start in the 1970s, ensuring that access to media technology, training, and tools were available to everyone. The media landscape has changed dramatically since then, but the principles of free speech and digital equity and inclusion are just as important. On this segment of Community Hotline, we'll talk to Antoine Haywood, whose research focuses on the contemporary relevance of community media centers like Metro East. With us today is Antoine Haywood. He's a PhD candidate at the Annenberg School of Communication at the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome, Antoine. It's good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Monica. Yeah, thanks for, for having me on the on the program. Yeah, you bet. It's um, been a long time since I've seen you, so it's, it's good to reconnect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of ask you here today because of your experience with community media, um, your, your really high level involvement with the Alliance for Community Media, and then the fact that you're pursuing your PhD in communication, it all kind of ties in. So I think uh, you, you might have a, a nice perspective on, on what's going on in this industry. Um, so can you tell me, first of all, how did you come to community media in the first place and, and how old were you at the time? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I was, oh man, was I uh, 22, 23? Okay. <laughs> so okay. In my um in my my early twenties, and um so that was about 20, 20 years ago now. So I'm I'm forty two, going on forty three, and I got involved um just as I graduated uh, after I graduated from uh, Morehouse College in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, I began <clears throat> um working as a museum fellow at the Atlanta History Center, and while I was doing my fellowship there, I was introduced to Allison Fussell who was um, the director at the time of People TV. And that was the, the that still is uh, the nonprofit organization that manages the public access TV channel for the, for the city of Atlanta. And she's like, oh, I heard that you're all, you're interested in media and we've got this youth program. We're starting this thing called the youth channel. Would you like to volunteer and be on the, on the advisory council? I'm like, sure, you know? Yeah. And I tell you the, the first, the instant I walked through the door at People TV, I knew I was like home. It was really? something about, it was just very, very clear. Um, and it's like, I don't have too many of those um, moments in my life, you know, <laughs> where it's like, you, but it's, but you have them, you know, people yeah, have, yeah. it's just like, it's really like, I am meant to be here. I wasn't expected, like, I didn't expect this to be a thing, but it is a thing and it just makes sense. And go with this. And um, so that was back the trajectory in trajectory of your life, didn't it? Yeah, it sure, it sure <laughs> yeah. did. I went from being a volunteer youth advisory council member to I started teaching some of the teen classes at People TV, the TV production classes. Um, I was the multimedia instructor at a, um, it was a multimedia lab in the rec center there. So oh, we were okay. doing um, even like digital inclusion work. Um, it wasn't even called digital inclusion then, you know, <laughs> like, know two, we were still using terms like multimedia, right? Back in two, right, right. <laughs> early 2000s, <laughs> right? So it was, um, but, but really it, we were teaching people in the community at our rec center, how to do uh, photo collages, how to do documentaries, um, short documentaries about their neighborhood. We're teaching people how to, and these are like seniors and teens, you know, I had. Which is kind of the best mix, and, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and it was just like, Monica, it just it literally changed my life in that trajectory. I was all about, I was going to be this, this independent documentary filmmaker like Spike Lee. I was going to go to New York. Like I had this whole thing like mapped out, right? Uh -huh. And the minute I stepped foot into People TV's doors and Ben Hill Rec Center, I was like, I'm, I'm community media. Like this is, this is it, you know? And so, and as I said, that's, that was 20 years ago now. Yeah. And, uh, and here I am you know, close to earning a PhD. In, right, in right. <laughs> which is, it's pretty impressive, actually, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that, you know, have taken it that far. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like that was a really, really good introduction to community media and, and a, a really special experience. You know, it, community media was founded on, on principles of um, free speech and democracy and civic engagement. Do you still find that that's the case these days from, from what you experienced there and, and what you see now? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, there's still, um, you know, pillars in terms of like the values of, mm -hmm. of community media. Um, I think that one thing that has become a little bit more um, in the foreground in terms of what practitioners, um, and I, I refer to, you know, folks like yourself, um, folks like myself as practitioners, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't see myself as a 
like a programmer, a local programmer, you know, mm -hmm. even though that's right. a part of like the work that you do, you know, or I'm not a channel operator, you know, right. like, right. you know, we actually, there's, there's practice in this and there's, there's the day in and the day out of figuring out, you know, putting out the fires and how can we make this class better? Or how can we better engage communities? And so, and that, to that point, community engagement, I think, and that's, that's, that's the work that I mm -hmm. did professionally um, at People TV and uh, Philly Cam, um, that's the, the, the access operation up right. here, um, is so, you know, there is free speech and there is democratic communication, right? Um, and I think those are, that's the, the those are the roots, right, of, mm -hmm. Of, of, of community media um, in, in community access television. But um, I think there's more now is, is the community engagement piece that's wow. in, that, that's, that people are developing and practicing and figuring out how do we get this better and how do we put that more to the forefront of just then, you know, come, you can come here, get on TV and say whatever you want. You right, know, it's right. like, well, well, yeah, you know, it's a little bit more than that. It, it is more than that. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, and when I talked about civic engagement and, and now it's really, it's more <clears throat> community engagement because it's not, it's not just politics or, right. or it's just getting involved in your community and, and trying to make a difference in a, in a good mm -hmm. positive way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. That's, that's, that's my, uh, that's my joy in community media yeah. too, is <laughs> that part of it. Yeah. So, um, you have you seen instances in in your in your years as a, a, a in community media where you've actually seen that it's made an impact on the community? Can oh you, yeah, I mean that that that's why I said I'm, I'm getting a PhD. In, yeah. In can you can <laughs> remember? It, can you remember back what like one of the first times you think, wow, we're we're doing something important here. It's not it's uh, not just learning how to make a TV show. It's not it's actually I don't know engaging a community that maybe doesn't have much representation in the media. I mean, yeah, you see that I mean, all the time. It's, it's the skills, it's, um, you know, I think back to people like Mr. Benny going back to when I was teaching at the, the rec center, um, you know, how he was just blown away. He, he scanned his whole yearbook and created a, a slideshow for his, like, it was like his 40th class reunion or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And it, it just totally, I can't even describe, like, the, the look on his face when he was like, I can do this. And then he did it. And he did and what then a sense he, of accomplishment. Yeah, huh? the sense of accomplishment. And then like the, the it, it, then it's like, he's also, it's like telling this story, he's telling all these stories. So a lot of storytelling that came up um, just by showing this stuff. So everything from like from, from that to, um, oh my gosh, to I, I, there's also the, the things that happen um, that aren't really, that are more so about the relationships of in the, the space that the community media uh, center holds for people. That's been, um, that, that's also, it, like, it's very transformative and it's something that I'm trying to like uplift in my work that, you know, yeah, there's one thing of people's lives have been transformed as they've gone through um, the, the process of production. And, but then there's like also transformation in the relationships that people build in like the centers and places like Metro East, right? Yeah. Um, um, you know, so this, this under, underscoring like the community, like community media center, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, I'm working on an op-ed piece right now with my advisor, Victor Ricard, and we're talking about, you know, PEG access as the center, you know, as centers, you know, we're, they can facilitate things like local journalism, which is in crisis, you know, right, but, right. you know, they also, they're places that facilitate where people can come and they actually like work on healing themselves, right? You know, they've, 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 they've experienced some kind of trauma and whether or not they disclose this when they come through the door or not, some people do, some people don't. Um, and this is just the kind of, as from my I've gotten a lot of this because I was, you know, the community engagement director and the youth program yeah, coordinator, right, right. you know? Yeah. You know, when people and I tell I tell this to everyone when I talk about like the what makes our work special is that people bring their whole selves through the door, <laughs> as you yes, know. <laughs> yes, yes. Like and you they find bring, out a lot about people. You find out a lot about people. You know, you know, like it or like it or not, you find out a lot about people. But you know, there there are um, a lot of transformation. All that to say, like I, there was um, there was um, you know, I've had some young people who had issues at home. And mm -hmm. that wasn't fully disclosed. And coming to um, like People TV and coming to Philly Cam, they those were safe spaces for those young people. Yeah. 
they and there they were ways where they and, could be and, themselves and they can then they could also they could work through they could build relationships with their peers that weren't mediated in ways by abusive parents which right. is what has happened you know so all of this is this is you know that's, yeah, this is the what community I'm, part of it's the of community, community part of it media. yeah real real talk and this is this is what my research is getting at you know of it's it's way way more nuanced and way more more you know deeper than you know somebody putting on a talk show about like how to do you know repair cars like you know it's like that may be yeah. it that may be the end product but it's like there's all this that we see as practitioners right <laughs> that goes yeah, into yeah that may be the vehicle that gets them the where they're going, but yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I get so. that. I, I know we've, I've had seniors who've gone through all sorts of stuff in their lives and then they've come through and this, they said, this has just saved me, you know, it saved yeah. me to be able to come Look. here and do that and, and have these people supportive of me and, and totally. be able to share yeah. my life yeah. and however they do it. Yeah. It's, and it's even just important. to hear like a simple yes, you know, to be uplifted and, and mm -hmm. be allowed to do so. We have some youth who have you know, come from backgrounds that were pretty, pretty rough and, and having uh, gone on to win some awards and yeah. for their work. And then some of them we were able to take back to Washington, D.C. and, uh, went, you know, to get their awards. It was, you know, and then to the um, Alliance for Community Media Conferences. Yeah. And, you know, what a, what a great experience. It is. It is. Wow. Yeah. I've had some of my young people that, you know, they graduated from high school um, and they went to college and then they started their own film production company, yeah. you know. You know, so there's a lot um, so of success stories out yo, there. There's tons, there's tons, you know, um, and, and that's, I mean, one, one thing that I guess I, my critique um, of, of, of our field is that, you know, we have to do a better job of telling our story, you know, yeah, I um, because I mean, we know it, right. And it's, it's, but it's like getting that story out there, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and I know it's hard because it's like, well, you know, we got to run the shop. You know, people gotta <laughs> make you got sure the camera. To yeah, you got a job to do. You know, the camera, the camera equipment goes out. You know, and you gotta make sure it comes back. You know, if it doesn't, all right, who do we, who do we call? You know, like there's yeah, all yeah, of those, the details of, of, <laughs> those, of yeah. all that wonky nitty gritty of just running like a community facility. You know, and um, and so yeah, it can it can be like who has the time to like you know um, we, you know we do the best we can to tell the stories. But so that's again another one of the reasons why I opted to I feel like it was a good time for me to transition into um you know becoming a scholar you know becoming a researcher is to to contribute because I I see that that is so important and I want to do whatever I can to do to help to tell the story yeah, you know yeah. to contribute and figure out resources you know you're, you're making you know, the time for, for making that, that yeah part of it that nobody else has time yeah, to do so to do, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no that's it's important it is important and that's why i wanted you on here today because it's 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 you know free speech week this month it's community media day on october 20th and yep. it just seemed like a good time to talk about what it is we do and, and why it's important yeah so yes we do teach people how to make their own television shows or their own films documentaries youtube whatever sure. um, but but there's a whole community aspect of it that's, that's yeah vitally important yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um you know and i also I, I constantly you know i remind people to that the, the that the media makers the local storytellers who engaged in community uh, media at, at places like metro east you know the majority of the folks are doing it voluntarily you know mm -hmm. and that there's a lot to be said for that folks are doing they're doing this voluntarily and you have some yeah. people who've been doing it for 20 years plus That's right they've got it down <laughs> they've got it down you know yeah. so um and and they've been able to make you know whatever accommodations they can to like to do that work but the point is it's like there's there's something very important there in order for you to volunteer your time you know there's there's something very deep profound <laughs> that is like compelling you <laughs> especially if you're going to do it for 20 years, you know, right. so, something keeps bringing you back. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. again, it's not just like, Oh, I have, it's not for mere vanity sake, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, and that's the yeah. thing I kind of push back at any kind of um, anything that kind of like, you know, may pass judgment about like, Oh, well, yeah. I mean, there are, we've had, we had programs at, at people TV that, yeah, it was, it's a lot of vanity, you know, but I just want so to be there on is TV. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just want to be on TV. Yeah, I mean, there yeah. is that. But I mean, what's interesting is like people may have come to the door because of their vanity, and all of a sudden it got it changed for them, right? Because of the community aspect, 
you know? And so, and then they go from like, well, yeah, I was just all allured by being on TV, but this is something else, you know? And they Mm -hmm. may have had some interaction with a guest that came on the program or somebody said something to them when they were out in the community about they saw their program or heard their program and how it impacted their life. Like then, then, then it's like, wow, this isn't just about me my face on it gets or real this is it gets yeah. real you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and that and that change and I think that's that's the thing that I mean that's for me like that's the magic of it yeah right yeah. you know and you feel like you've you've done something that made a positive contribution to your community you, you've right. actually done something that's yeah you know that yeah. matters I see community media as like an act of care like it's a caring it's a it's a caring mm-hmm. act um and and this is something that we've talked about a lot of at Philly cam and in fact they're theme for um, their anniversary and community media day. Like, so all of their festivities that are happening right now are, it's a, it's, it is, um, you know, it's addressing, like, it's looking at how community media is like a form of care. Like, how is this, like, it, it is this act of care, yeah. you know? Um, and so, and, and I just, you know, and I think that that's something care people understand. And I, and I've, that's what I've come to as a conclusion after years 15 or 20 years of, of just being doing the work and as a practitioner is that um, that people really do care about the work that they're doing and that's this is this I've seen it like the way that they've ex- they express care through the programs that they make you know when they have people at, you know come in there there have so many shows that in the before times when we could all sit down and eat together you know right. people would people would feed their guests oh, yeah. you know they, like they, they told totally, me that's almost a requirement yeah. you that's to. a real, yeah 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 <laughs> so it's like well number one feed your crew you know yeah, but yeah. number two <laughs> yeah. um you know but, but number that's two that's a communal like people, you know that's just, yeah. breaking of bread is a, a breaking of bread way is, to, to connect mm-hmm. with people and doing it after sharing that experience of putting on this show is is yep Pretty yeah cool. yeah cool. it is yeah. it is pretty cool so yeah. so yeah so yeah so well, community media is care you know um, like is, that. Is that, that's, i can see it as a new bumper sticker for 2022. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to get some stickers made and all of that you know so. <laughs> so well tell me i don't have a lot of a lot more time but um i want to know about um a couple things one is the the pandemic was tough for everybody for every industry you did a lot of work on finding out how community media uh, survived or is surviving the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Are, what, are, what were the big conclusions that you came from out of that? Yeah, so we had, um, uh, first I have to acknowledge uh, my collaborators, uh, Dr. Uh, Patricia Ofterheide at American University and um, uh, Mariana um, Sanchez uh, Santos. Uh, we worked together to, um, we did a study on how PEG operations responded to um, to the pandemic and the onset of the, the pandemic, and um, what we found were were three three things. PEG is the public education mm-hmm. and government part of right. the community media. Yeah. So what we found is that um, you know the the community media um, staffers they you know use the technical expertise um, mm-hmm. to connect people so to make to help. Um, government officials to help um, public safety departments, um, even seniors, individual members in the community transition to virtual life. Um, the second thing that we we saw was that um, PEG played a role. PEGs played a role as uh, news and information providers, and so you know, c- you know, PEG anchored community media centers don't do traditional journalism like the con- you know investigative, like the weekly breaking news, all that kind of stuff, but in areas so like uh, Akuku, um, Maui um, out there, uh, Philly Cam here in Philadelphia, uh, they all and there, there are a host of other examples, um, but that you could see in the in the report that we put out. That yeah, they facilitated local journalism, you know, and participatory. So out in Akuku, they actually had you know people with you know they taught people virtually how to use their cell phones, how to become like stringers, and they were you know, feeding in these like small stories to, yeah. to, um, to the, to the facility, to the station. And they were putting together a regular, um, you know, the Maui daily, like a regular show. And so, um, yeah. And so that, so you had that, um, happening. And then the third thing is that, um, you know, PEG community media facilitated like public virtual public rituals, you know, which is very important when people were in isolation um, they were still able to participate in like flag ceremonies and Memorial Day, 
um, because of we had the technology and the infrastructure was already there. These rich public rituals, which, and especially in your smaller, tighter knit communities mm -hmm. are very, very important for people to that and, and, and the, how they experience a sense of, a sense of attachment you know, and how they, how they experience collectively, you know, where people go down to every day. I mean, every year they go to the, the veterans parade, the memorial parade or the right. whatever, the flat, you know, and graduations, right? So that's another very important right. public ritual. And so pegs are already, pegs do, and a lot of pegs do graduations anyways. Mm -hmm. So all of it was set up and ready. And when pivoting, I was like, well, how are we going to do graduations? Like we can't, and I was like, well, it's already wired. Yeah. We just need to reconfigure how we do it. And so, um, you know, one of the one one uh, example that we we often we, we talk about um, a lot is uh, Davis Media Access that actually helped uh, its local school. So Davis in Yolo County, California, um, Davis, uh, they have a low power FM station. You know, of course, they have their um, their peg channels um, and they, you know, of course, they screen stream every, online, um, but they recorded um the the teachers wishing their students and each other's like these audio messages that played out on the radio oh, so they right. were they drove they were driving through in caravans and people were waving and honking and they had balloons but they were able to tune into davis media access radio and hear you know That's teachers right. in the community I, i'm getting choked up now you know well, it's like, it, it, it's people like <laughs> in isolation. People when people have you know? been isolated like we had been, it is yeah. very difficult. And yeah, for some people more than others, but being able to connect that way is you know yeah. It's so it's help. very yeah. I mean, I, I choked up because I'm like it's very moving because it's like you know this is what we do. This is what community yeah. does and facilitates connect people. Yeah. and connect people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, so yeah, it was just a perfect opportunity to um, to conduct the study, and I'm just grateful that. Um, you know, Professor Pat reached out to me and connected with Mike Wasnar at ACM. And right. we also uh, connected with the Natoa folks who helped us distribute a survey. We've done an academic journal article, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a public facing um, report that okay. uh, the Center for Media and Social Change out of American University um, is that's that's where we published the, the public report for and um so it's it's you don't get all the academic mumbo jumbo it's just <laughs> Make it here's, easier to read, huh? here's what we did you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it <laughs> here's down what we saw day. here's yeah. here are the points you know um here's here were opportunities you know we also talking about opportunities um for for where policy um can can come in and actually help um you know makes you know help make stir uh bring 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 pegs infrastructure you know into into a little bit more of the contemporary age um in terms of you know how we get our funding and you know what's being protected um and you know and of course like you know the whole part of the story is like the why you know this is why it's important to to we got to figure out ways of yes cable subscription revenues are declining you know and that's a major source right. of revenue funding that supports like a metro east but we do need to figure out how what are some other ways that this can be publicly supported you know people um, need to understand what and it people understand doing. but then but then it's like that whole big why what we're just the gist of what we're talking about um you know now it's like this is the why we should have continue to advocate for a Metro East to continue to exist, you know, and, and have support. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, all so. the other community media. I'm centers, even, so. I'm even wearing my, you are, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I wore, I you. wore today just, to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just to, Good job. Marty, Marty, Marty Jones gave this to me. So yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. That's great. <laughs> I, get this. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, I, I have a million more questions for you, but we really are running out of time here. So um, one last question, what do you see as the future? Is there any big thing you think see in the future of community media that we haven't touched on? Golly, I mean, I think that there is really something um, in the direction of like local journalism and participatory journalism, um, and and it's it's you know it's something that has to be imagined. It has to be. There's more experimentation that needs to happen there. But I do think that there's a lot that community media can do in terms of filling in where there's news and information gaps. You know, and so this goes back. This is the second thing that we found in our study. Um, I mean, and then I also think, I mean, going back to even the technical expertise, you know, people, there's always this question of like, well, why, why do we need something like a Metro East or a Philly cam or Davis Media Access when we have YouTube and all these 
platforms that do but you know as you clearly see in the pandemic right you know like youtube didn't help you know whatever township council get onto the platform right, to start right. streaming you need and if you the, don't know how to use those things for in the first place then what's the yeah but having people on the ground too who like who are connected to the communities um mm -hmm. that understand the intricacies of like the local politics and culture and the social dynamics you know um versus I mean, that's that's something too that paid practitioners volunteers offer um if you want to go back around to like this local storytelling, right? That, you know, someone can't drop it. You know, you, you can have somebody that drops in and does some reporting, but it's like, it's going to be a very limited, you know, view yeah. of, of yeah. what the story is. And everybody, you know, you're like, okay, yeah, that's one half of the story, but we know because we live here and I live such and such as my neighbor and blah, 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 like that, you know, we can tell we a better story. really well. We do, we do. well. We do. And I think that should be a real focus. Well. It is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I absolutely agree with that. You know, this, this whole like doing local well. Um, and I think that there's less and less, if you look at the broad national like media scape that does focus on and even value, I'd argue local. Like I localism, agree. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well, Antoine, thank you so much for being with us and taking the time today. I know you're very busy and, and, uh, I, and I wish you the best of luck in, in your studies. And uh, I know you're going to just, I know you'll be out there and I'll be seeing yeah. you all over the place, you know, <laughs> doing your talks and whatnot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed this. So um, let's, you know, keep people uh, in the know about Community Media Day that, you know, this is, you know, spread the word about what a good thing this is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad like we, we managed, you know, we kept it going, you know, yeah, me too. Me um, too. so, and I'm looking forward to uh, many more years of just celebrating, um, community media day. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Antoine. Alrighty. You take care of our viewers out there. Thank you so much for watching and, uh, do check it out. Check out, uh, the websites of your local community media station. Thanks.